What are some things that we could do right now today to improve our quality of life? Sleeping enough and uh. good sleep. That's critical. That might be number one. Um, activity levels. You got to be active. Even mm -hmm. as you get older, if you can just go for a walk every day, um, yeah. it's it'll make a big difference in the way you feel. And and while we're still here, we always want to feel as good as we possibly can and do as much as we can. Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders radio network. And I am here with Mr. Mark Goddard, who is the vice president of clinical services of Infobionic.com. And Mark and I, we have been talking about amazing technology and how early detection is preventing, you know, the advancement of coronary diseases. And I think one of the things that's really exciting about this conversation is really to look to the future of how this can impact the quality and the longevity of life. And I think that's one of the things that I, I want to talk about in the future. Obviously, AI is a big part of this, but I think a lot of times, at least the research that I've been able to uh, assess is the gener generation X and Y, they're actually doing better at taking care of themselves overall than the boomers. Why do you think that is, Mark? I think a lot of it is just technology and education and what... Mm -hmm. what where we've gone related to health in general associated with what you eat, what you do, mm -hmm. keeping a fib at bay is quite often associated with just eating right. Yeah. Making sure your blood pressure is maintained appropriately. Mm -hmm. Your blood sugar is okay. Making sure your lipids are good too. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything going on that's going to change the structure of your heart. And if it does, then you wind up with more yeah. likely for arrhythmias, especially yeah. in relation. Yeah. There's a lot of communities in this country that are marginalized. They don't have the same access to health care that um, others do. Um, are you finding that in amongst uh, people of color, people of um, lower income, that it's a higher uh, standard? I think that the people of color and um, minority groups are, are underserved in general. They deserve mm -hmm. more attention, even in research. A lot of the research you see is associated with Western Europe and the United States and, and isn't really diverse per se. Mm -hmm. um, we need to understand what the, you know, what things look like for populations that are not as uh, well represented. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it could make a change in how we manage their health. Um, that's a a big thing that I wish I could have a solution for in changing and, and understand what, what would make that change. But um, yeah, um, certain people are served well and, and others are not served as well. And uh, there needs to be more of an equal playing field and how to get there. I'm not so sure. Right. Right. And when you look at this whole piece, as far as how they get there, I think one of the things, there's some things that we could do right now today to improve our quality of life. Um, what are you finding that are things that just are kind of no brainer things that we could do better? Sure. Sleeping enough and uh, good sleep. That's critical. That might be number one. Um, activity levels. You got to be active. Even mm -hmm. as you get older, if you can just go for a walk every day, um, yeah. it's it'll make a big difference in the way you feel. And, and while we're still here, we always want to feel as good as we possibly can and do as much as we can. So following the traditional um, suggestions related to diet, um, don't eat too many preservative foods with lots of preservatives within them. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the, the common sense things that sometimes we don't live mm -hmm. by ourselves in general, but we should think through. And if we did, we'd have better outcomes. How is hydration affecting? Hydration is critical. It's a whole nother um, subject, to be honest, because the concentration of what they call electrolytes within your body is critical in maintaining normal heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, having electrolytes that are completely out of balance quite often causes arrhythmias that are far more lethal than atrial fibrillation, wow. ones that can create a, uh, a bad scenario within a few seconds, not a few hours or, or days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so how much water or hydration should, should someone have every day? 
Uh, you definitely shouldn't overdo it. I would listen to what your doctor has to say. Anywhere between a liter and a half and three liters is probably what they would recommend, depending mm -hmm. on the scenario. And is. that also includes water rich foods, does it not? Like like fresh fruit and vegetables. So it's not, yes, they need to drink water. But I think one of the things that we tend to think of, you know, I drink, I, I'm not going to drink all that water, but you can get it through fruits and vegetables, can you not? You can, absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, staying well hydrated is critical because our body's mostly made up of, of water. Um, but I will say that if you ever drink water, like quite often, if you see marathons where the person gets to the end and they can't get across the finish line because their body's not working right, it's usually not related to lack of water. It's usually related to so much water, but none of the other elements that keep you balanced. Yeah. So, um, that's an example of, Hey, what some, too much water is too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, that a lot of these long distance runners, they tend to reduce the water intake when mm -hmm. they're running, which I have always found is fascinating. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then, and then obviously fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think what the term is fresh, what is the difference between like say organic and just regular produce? Organic produce often has more um, nutrients within them, but mm -hmm. not always. So you would have to do some like specific research to specific right. and vegetables to know which ones make sense to buy organically. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I ever since I learned that, it's like one of the things that it doesn't make that big of a difference at the check stand. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, especially if you're aging, um, that organic, um, that, you know, vegetables, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables are so to me critical. I agree. And, you know, you know, what's kind of funny though. I saw a Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, yes. podcast recently and he's, he was comparing ages and how long people lived throughout time and what that mm -hmm. looked like. And it's funny, the time where we have the most processed foods, the most preservatives and all those things is also the time where we're living dramatically longer than any other time. Now, I'm not saying that that's the reason. because That's interesting, reason, isn't it? But I just thought it was a funny, I thought about it for a second. I'm like, my gosh, he is right. He's always, yeah. right. he's always right. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, and, and you know what you're saying is so, you know, interesting because mm -hmm. obviously maybe... You know, I, but what I, what I look at is chemicals are not yeah. good in our bodies. I totally agree. Um, you know, making sure I don't think necessarily that we're, we're washing our fruits and vegetables as good as we should. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things in ingesting chemicals into our system. I, I mean, that has to be an effect, but then again, so many of us have lived so long. It's like our bodies have become resistant to it, you know? Um, so that's the whole other piece of that. I, I do think that washing vegetables, especially lettuce, like romaine lettuce, yeah, thoroughly is a critical step because absolutely lots of food poisonings related to lettuce. So, Mark, it's been an honor to have you on the show this week. Thank you so much. And for those of you interested, again, go to infobionic.com. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.